What are you doing? I'm just trying to adjust my chair. You want to put it down so you're not moving the table? No, up? because I do that to hook in so like I don't like randomly start rolling back. <laughs> Can we start this podcast yep. before Princess? <laughs> Welcome back to episode 44 of Lager Golf Podcast. So awesome uh, weekend this weekend for golf. Anthony Kim finally broke par. Uh, we didn't think he would uh, do it, but here we are. So and uh, not true. We said he would. We so, said we eventually. said he would play he would play better in a second competitive event than his first, and he would get closer closer to par. Which, well, which his he overall improve. score for the event was what I think plus two. Yep. Yeah, so he got closer to par, and he had fourteen one putts on Sunday. Yeah, so, or I Saturday. Mean, he played a good final round. Yeah, shot sixty five. Anytime he makes seven birdies in a round, you had to do some things right. You know. You can see he's progressively started making more birdies each round. Correct. It's just, obviously, he's still making doubles. Can't do that in professional golf. Well, and Hong Kong's a tighter golf course, too, so it's a little bit more precision-driven. than. Yeah, it was uh, a shorter, a little tighter golf course. Kind of more like a harbor town. But, um, yeah, you can tell he's, he's getting more comfortable being out. Dude, what I thought was funny, he's playing in the Asian Tour this week. Is he? Yep. Yeah, so he's just not hiding morning, behind. More reps in. Yeah. Lives doors. So. I was like, good for him. Um, Wish you the best of luck. Yeah, so I, I was going to say, I mean, I, I'll be honest that he, it was cool to see him that first event come back, but for me personally, after that, I was just like, okay, cool, he's playing golf. I was gonna, now I'm going to pay attention to other ways. The, the novelty of it has worn off, right? For sure. Now it's just, he's just a golfer. Yeah. And Hey, best of luck, yeah. like you said. But, well, um, the other big story is somebody learned how to putt. Uh, Who's that? Some Scotty Shuffler. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Chubbs went out to the mini golf course before uh, Bay Hill last week and yeah. taught him how to putt. <laughs> <laughs> that damn clown. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die, clown. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so kind of interesting. Switches back to a spider. Um, you know, as I, we mentioned, what, last year? When he putted with his milled spider, it was the best putting round that he's had. Well, we said it like a few podcasts ago when yeah. Rory made a statement saying, like, I think Scotty should go to a mallet. And I think uh, Scotty Shuffler should start giving Rory some pointers. Some royalties. <laughs> <laughs> no, some pointers because oh. uh, the golf game has not been well doing uh, doing well for Rory. So um, golf's, golf's tough. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but what's different about the putter? Yeah, so instead of the milled, it's, and it's actually cool, I didn't, it was part of the uh, the blue wrapper, it's a white Serlin insert. Traditionally speaking, the, the new spiders have an, uh, a 70-30, so 70% polymer, 30% Serlin, so it's more of a clicky insert. So he went basically to an off-the-rack putter with a uh, Serlin insert, so softer face. So I thought that was interesting with the plumber's neck. Yeah. Went an inch shorter, 35 and a half, and slightly smaller grip. So... I don't know who said all that a few weeks ago, but they must have been really smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, last week we mentioned that you know the PGA Tour needed one of their superstars to win this event, and not just win it, but win it handedly. And, I mean, Scotty Shuffer basically put the tour on his back and did that for him, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did he save the PGA Tour? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he saved, this, he he saved, saved that week He saved anyway. the Arnold Palmer. Yeah. I mean, because the, the week did not start well. Uh, meaning, like, players weren't happy that, like, players were saying it felt weird with how little people were there. It felt empty, didn't it? It felt empty. Um, it really just didn't feel like that invitational that Arnold Palmer always put on because Arnold Palmer's whole point was to provide an opportunity for the best golfers to come play and face a really hard test because that's that's a testament to Scotty Shuffle. You know he's been working on it because those greens were baked out. I mean, players were complaining on Saturday saying that the ball wasn't even rolling. It was skidding. Yeah. I was going to say, Bay Hill always traditionally gets, especially on a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and tough. obviously they kept – I kept waiting for the announcer's curse. I watched the entire entire round yeah. Sunday. So I was waiting for the announcer's curse because they kept going, well, Scotty Shuffler has done nine one-putts in a row. And <laughs> he hasn't had a three-putt. And he kept having those, like, four-footers. And I was like – it's like, well, here it is, here it is, and every single one was just dead center. So he even beat back the announcer's curse. Yeah. I mean, the leaderboard going into Sunday was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had top three players. They're all major champions. Rory McIlroy was lurking, which if any of you guys saw his highlights from the final round, the guy was in the middle of every fairway, and 
he couldn't find a green with an iron to save his life. It seems like right he now. He was hooking the ball like crazy. It seems like right now, I know somebody else is doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like right now Rory is uh, just kind of like backdooring his way into these top tens. He's well, not he really, didn't. He played his way out. He finished like I would say this one, yeah, he might have back, he, he, he played his billion. way out. But if you think about Honda last week. Backdoor. He ended up backdooring into top ten. It's like no, top I mean, 15 or something. But. He wasn't top 10. He's not really he being felt competitive. Bad. I think he finished in the 20s again. Yeah. He was – now, Rory McIlroy was one back of the lead last week, and then from the middle of the fairway, 90 yards out, skulls it over the green, makes double, never returns. Mm. It was kind of like this week. I you know. do that. Huh? So maybe he should get we, his losses and lines. We all can do that. Really? Like, <laughs> <I didn't> do that. <laughs> no, and then also this week, same kind of deal. First round, played terribly. Second round, third round, he's three back of the lead going into Sunday. Bogey's hole one, or sorry, par's hole one, uh, makes a scrappy par on hole two, and then double mm. <laughs> on three. And then it, it just goes down from there. And and that's when we make jokes about, well, does the PJ did the PJ tour get saved? Well, for it, it's supposed to be an elevated event, meaning the best players in the world, things like that. Scotty Scheffler definitely put the tour on his back this week, even though he's never made comments about the the politics side of golf, I would say. Yeah, I mean he's he's definitely quiet, stays out of that stuff, which is honestly one of the reasons why I like him. But um no, he definitely he played well and the tour like the PGA tour needed one of their big names to break through and win. They finally got one to win. Yeah. Well, Does he go back to back this week? Because he won last year. Come well, on. I was the say, grass is so tough because we don't know what the weather's gonna Scotty like. is uh when he gets hot, he gets hot, you know. Yeah. Um I say, looking at the Players' Championship, you know, who do we, what do we think about that? I, I'm excited to watch it. It's one of my favorite tournaments to watch all year. It's a fun, always I a fun finally, golf course to watch. last summer, I got to go and actually play it. Yeah. And what did you make on 17? I made par. Mm. Landed almost, made a hole in one. Did you get your bag tag? Yeah, we did. Uh, landed and hit, it was, the pin was cut back left, and he one-hopped it. And it literally went right across the cup. Yeah. To three feet. <laughs> Missed the birdie. Dang it. <laughs> Landon. Of course, Dad blocked it far right of the green. I had like 30 foot for yeah. birdie. <laughs> it was a terrible shot. But it well, was fun. Oh, you made your par. Yeah. I say, so looking at the Players' Championship, um, field's a little bit different this year for this event, isn't it? Well, <laughs> Golf Digest actually well, took the Well, not this year. No, it's it's still this year too, but the Golf Digest took the article down. But um, it's the weakest field that the Players Championship has ever had since they started the Players Championship. Yeah. Um, so they had a whole article about if it's a Players Championship, invite all players, and then that article got taken down last night. Huh. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Is this? Is, I guess is this considered one of the elevated events? Um. Or is it an elevated elevator? Well, like Lucas Lucas Glover had a big blow up last week because it's funny how Rory players like Rory and Wyndham Clark opened their mouth saying another talking point. So to my eyes, the PJ Tour looks like they're they kind of did another briefing of, hey, here's your talking points for this week, guys. Um, Rory McRoy says that he wishes there was less players and less tour cards. Then you have Wyndham Clark that also said the same thing. I wouldn't mind if there was only a hundred tour cards and a hundred players. I'm sure you um, wouldn't because there's less people you yeah. got to beat. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, right? But you can't say you have the best competition because what defines competition? The amount of players. Yeah, the right. amount of people you're competing against. Yep. And that's kind of like, it's like, well, why, why are they always being hypocrites of their own statements they're making? Well, we've always considered the players to be almost like a fifth major. That's the whole point. It is. Yeah. It's the the they used to be branded it the fifth major. Yeah, that's it's what it's branded. The, that's what it's, it's branded. The right? elevated. In my right? opinion. I agree. You know, I think that when it's a major or something like that, it's a big event. The best players, including live players, should all be invited. The the top 125, 150 players, whatever it is. It's 144. So yeah, it's still a full field. Yeah, 144 players in the world. Period. Across all the you know, maybe it's just a straight down the list. But that's the problem. We don't have a true world golf rankings list anymore. No, no. so you're right. You I said not, not one. Well, they yeah. said this is 
Kyle, it's the weakest field the players has ever had. Since they started the tournament. <clears throat> Since they started the tournament. So it's supposed to be the, P- the PGA Tour elevated event. Now it's kind of like Lucas Glover's like, It's the problem. original elevated event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, just the, that's just the tough thing um, because you got to wonder where are the – what are the other tournaments going to do? Like you don't have to worry about the Arnold Palmer or the Memorial because those were always invitationals. The Genesis was always an invitational. Mm-hmm. But it's like other tournaments that you're creating it to be an elevated event that you're saying you're going to win more money, more FedEx Cup points against less people, and then also say we still have our fifth major. You've got to do something to differentiate that event from the others if it's still going to be that important. Because the other thing with it as well, too, is it was always the biggest purse in golf. I, I don't know if it still is or not anymore with these elevators. There's no telling just because with how much. I mean, Scotty Scheffler won $4 million. That you know, doesn't suck. That no, that's, doesn't a, suck. I mean, that's a lot of money. <laughs> All right, so looking at and I'm, I don't know if you guys heard this or not, but sp- sports betting is legal in North Carolina now. Finally. I'm sure all the Kevin Hart commercials and everything else you've seen. You know. um, so who do we, who do we like? Rob Gronkowski yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, fine, I'll download the app. <laughs> uh, so uh, who do we like going into the Players' Championship? Who are we betting on? And uh, let me preface this with saying, I'm probably not the person you should ask for betting advice. <laughs> yeah, I've got the worst luck possible. On. Insert legal yeah. disclaimer here. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <saying leave. laughs> Uh, Tiger's playing this week, isn't he? No. Nope. Didn't commit. Mm-mm. Nope. Didn't commit. Tiger's done. Yeah. I'll be the first to say it. Oh, just played really well. He's done. Is, is Scotty yeah. the guy? Is that who we're going to throw all Scott, our... Scotty's got to be the number one pick. I mean, he's the favorite. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Clark. You like Wyndham Clark? Yep. I, it's a great question, obviously. I downloaded one of the apps. I'm mm-hmm. not getting any free ads to anybody here, but um, uh, I would probably – I look at strokes gain, right? Look at the players playing the best in the world right now. They're all at the top of strokes gain, tee to green, ball striking, well, things like – Scotty's like, at the top of all Obviously, of Scott, Scotty, <laughs> Scotty is in a different world, so yeah. obviously he's the favorite. If I'm going to go dark horse pick this week, then I'm most likely going to go Sung J.M. Mm. It's a good pick. Sung J.M. He plays well there. He's too. a walking <clears throat> ATM. Yeah. All that guy does is top 20, top 10. Yeah. It's ridiculous. That's kind of my dark horse, I think. Now, here's the interesting stat. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, interesting. Only two players have won in the last 20 years that started in the afternoon wave, first day, oh, yeah. early morning wave, second round. Guess who those two players were? Who? Tiger Woods and mm-hmm. Phil Mickelson. Mm-hmm. Well, you Every gotta single be, neither of them Nick, winning. I say like, neither one of them in the field. <laughs> no, 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 I'm thinking more well, of the wave. You're eliminating, you're eliminating half of the field basically, right off the right, right off the rip. When you sports bet, you come up with you r- go with trends. <laughs> you yeah. go with trends, and they might not have logic to it, right? Only you have to convince yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I believe you want to put yourself right too. Yeah. So I'm not saying this as, but I'm just saying, hey, I, there's something there. There's something there, and the reason why I think it's crazy that those two guys, too, were the winners, mm. but two of the best golfers of all time. Right. So, like, they're an anomaly. Yeah, they break, I, the, they now, break the trend. Scotty Scheffler starting in the afternoon. It might be at time to add number three to I that. I think so. And looking at the weather, weather looks pretty decent. Yeah. Sunday rain. But. I think uh, I'm going to go with my dark horse. is going to be JT. Well, that's my main pick. Yeah. I've got three picks uh, out. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, JT would be a smart bet. I would put maybe like throw a little like top top ten bet on JT. Yeah, the line he yeah. took yesterday where he hit driver basically at 150 people's face was pretty insane. Oh, Rory's oh. drive where he Rory, Rory dro- Justin Rory Thomas on literally 10. aimed at like the whole crowd in the marshal was so confused. Yeah. On, it was great. On <laughs> Saturday, Rory drove that green on that line. He's well, the first player to ever that, do it. The players championship this week, the practice round yesterday. No, that was at the one where people were right in front of him. No, Justin Thomas yesterday during the practice round. Different oh. different person, different situation. I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Justin Thomas did it on Sunday at Bay Hill. That's number 10 tee shot. He went right over the people. Yeah. I'm saying that video might have been from Bay Hill. Because which hole at TBC Sawgrass do you have to go over people? I have to rewatch the video. I don't think there is one. 
TBC Sawgrass is pretty straightforward off the team. I, I can't think of I can't. I say JT all. took Rory's line on Sunday at Bay Hill, which was on ten, where it's like four hundred thirty yards, but they drove the green. <laughs> I still got sand coming out of my eyes. Why well, you got From sand what? in your From eyes? Beach volleyball last night. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> Not only did I take it in my eyes, but I got like, uh, <laughs> like a whole cup of sand in my mouth. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Never want that. Uh, <laughs> TMI, Daryl. <laughs> um, my dark horse pick for the week is Tom Kim. Tom Kim. Yep, I like him as my dark horse. My main pick was JT, and my could shock me is uh, Ricky. Yeah. But Tom Kim would be the guy that if you're going to throw five bucks on and have a higher payout, that would be him. That's the one you're picking? Yep. Interesting. Do you think Wyndham Clark bounces back after kind no. of his week this week? <laughs> he lost a lot of fans. You mean Patrick Reed Jr.? <laughs> I was going to say, is that, is that the... It's a hot top topic right now. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to talk to Julie about that. <clears throat> but, um, all right, so we got Scotty, JT, Tom Kim, Sun J.M. Sun J.M. is my dark horse. I'd probably yeah. say safe bet. That's not Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler should be everyone's bet in the world. But oh yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> bet a hundred to win one hundred and one dollars. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I do like the JT pick. Yeah, I was gonna say JT. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> it's yeah. time for him to win again. He's trending. He made a little run on Sunday this past week. He's been playing pretty well. Yeah. So I think it's it's about time for him to like I say. I, I think he's probably more of a top ten pick than a win, but he might could always. Comes down to putting. Back door into a yeah. win like he likes to do sometimes. All right. We going, uh, We want to talk about some Netflix full swing? Yeah, so obviously season two just launched last week, and most golfers, instead of watching it across the weekend, they all sat down and watched it on one sitting. So yeah, you got to binge watch, you know. It was uh, definitely a little bit better than season one, um, but on the same token, you could definitely tell the first two episodes were very politically driven. Um, and then episode four and five, they kind of had to basically whoever at Netflix pressed the emergency stop button and flip the entire script. Yeah. Because the first, you know, the opening scene, Stan Ravenport basically saying that the live guys aren't taking golf serious, they're not practicing, et cetera. And then two episodes later, and then Brooks, man, Brooks, he's really playing well. Yeah. Like, these live guys are playing great. Yeah. So I, I thought that was pretty funny um, that two episodes in and Basically, how the series started versus where it went. Yeah, it it was nice to get the bull crap out of the way early. It was funny, like watching it in in retrospect, right? Because this was obviously for the twenty twenty three season, and then the first couple episodes of the full swing are for the start of the twenty twenty. Yeah, it was. Season, it was. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's end like, of twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. That so that winter like, break. It was a good little while ago, and like living through that time. Um, you only saw like four live events. The talk about you know the guys moving to live and how they're not playing well and practicing that stuff, and then how it slowly f- transitioned into from after the Masters and then going into that PJ Championship. All like, wait, these guys are actually playing pretty good. It took some time for that to happen. And then when you watched it in, in the Netflix edit, it's like in ten minutes that script flipped. Yeah, <laughs> so it made it just seem really uh, really quick the way that was written or the way it was edited. Yeah, I think the uh, the biggest surprise for me, um, just since we're doing a general review, is the the Joel Damon episode because obviously season one, I mean, and coming from a person that loves Joel Damon, season one kind of put him on a little bit of a pedestal, mm-hmm. and then this season um, it kind of knocked him off of that pedestal. He had a difficult episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, my whole thing on on the Netflix full swing stuff is you can consider me an F1 fan that gains, like I, 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 I gained a lot of love for F1 because of the Netflix series. Um, and I get Netflix is trying to do the same exact formula, formula as their, as their drive to survive. And it just doesn't work for golf. I think I was actually thinking about this too. And I think the difference there is like with drive to just with drive to survive and formula one, there's a lot of like secrecy and like the teams shrouded, are very shrouded. tight knit. Yeah, the teams are the very season. shrouded, and so there's a lot of stuff you don't know that happens yeah. behind closed doors. So when you watch it, you're seeing stuff you don't get to see in a normal race week. You get a different perspective, yeah. and you learn some new information for sure. And <laughs> is golf coverage and media coverage so comprehensive that we don't get that with golf? 
Because realistically, a full swing, you didn't learn anything new. Yeah, you, you just heard it from a different perspective. You heard it from the player. No, themselves. we already knew everything. But yeah, it's like we already knew that stuff was happening. We just actually got to hear Brooks Kepka kind of talk his way through the PGA Championship and the Masters. Yeah. Like, kind of say a few words. Yeah. Right. Which was honestly, it was interesting. Like, it's cool. like I'm still going to watch that video yeah. every single time. But it's just, I don't feel like I learned anything new from it. No. And that's no. why, that's exactly why I was saying it. I'm looking at it through the lens of Drive to Survive, and it's just not working for me. I right. think it's still, like, the Tony Finau episode in season one was fantastic because it was more about his family, more about outside of golf. I think that's I think that's what Full Swing needs to focus more on. Yeah, and I get that they tried to create the drama on the course this year. Kind of, I mean, you have Rory essentially throwing a temper tantrum because he missed the cut, and he's saying he needs a hard reset, and then he comes back and he plays well in the majors. And I get like they were trying to golf. You don't get those certain storylines, right? So you could see that this year they wanted to keep it on the course, but you didn't quite get the. Yeah, you well, already knew everything was going on. It's like how are you going to show something different to the viewers? Well, and like I say, those turnarounds and those storylines take time as well too. So like when they cram it into one episode, it feels forced. Yeah, you know, it doesn't feel as natural as like Drive to Survive does. I feel like. Mm-hmm. And then, and that's the thing. I think there was some good in this year's season. It was just boring to me. But Netflix's target already tar- target audience isn't us mm-hmm. per se. Isn't that like they know they fan? know we're gonna watch it no yeah. matter what? Just as average golf fans, they're trying to still. That's why they talk about things like last year. Everyone's making fun of it when they were explaining what the cut is, right? And they were saying it in layman's terms and things like that. It's like, we already know what the cut's like. Well, Netflix is trying to get new people to golf. And I don't fault them for that. I mean, that's, that's fine. There's nothing well, that's wrong with that. formula for yeah. every Netflix series. Formula One, boost Formula One. The NASCAR, uh, whatever it's called, get more people to watch NASCAR. Yeah. Full swing, get more people to watch golf. So yeah, right. yeah. That's kind of how they're doing these shows right now. Yeah, so obviously my viewing lenses are a little different than, than most. And most people are going to say that the full season was great. I definitely think the Joel Damon episode was a tough look on Joel Damon. Um, I, I'd, I would agree. Um, um, I, and I hope as many fans as he gained from the season one, I was he a might fan have of lost his. I was a fan two. of his well before full full swing season one. Um, but um, I'm I'm hoping he kind of got help. Yeah, I mean, Gino basically gave him an ultimatum. Yeah, that you can without get. saying it. Yeah. I say if you're his caddy, yeah, you got to be thinking. I'm exploring some other opportunities right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like I'm looking for some other jobs. You know, Joel, when, when they showed the episode where he was like, "I want, I want you to go make 17 million with Taylor Gooch, with Taylor Gooch," and his caddy goes, "I don't want to do that. Yeah, I want you to just try." Right. It's like it's like that's all it comes down to. Right. But well, and then how the series ended was. So what do we think about the final couple episodes with the Ryder Cup? I mean, it kind of. Our predictions that we made last year after the captain's picks come out, it was cool to kind of see like our opinions on it when we did that podcast and then to kind of see the behind the scenes thing. And it's like, we went too far off the boat. Right. Or where what we thought happened actually happened. JT was already on the team eight months before Regardless because they already, cause they already had Netflix cameras there talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. I think that's so that's too. my only kind of fishiness with it. It's just like, I get that they're trying to kind of create real, reality TV. But when you plant, when someone else other than the actual inner circle knows when the calls are going to be be had and what you're going to conversations you're going to talk about, it feels a little scripted to me. Yeah, I will say I I, um, I feel really bad for Keegan Bradley. Same, and I and I and I like Keegan Bradley a lot as a golfer, and uh, I even kind of mentioned the scene in that final episode where, and not really to spoil it or anything like that if you haven't watched it, but he's watching the Ryder Cup and he. He showed if, and my statement was, if that was truly genuine and not just him putting it on for the camera, which it seemed no like telling. it was, seemed like it was genuine because I I feel like Keegan's one of those people where he he's not an actor, well, right? He, he's a very genuine. His person. initial responses after he didn't get picked on team, he's like, "I'm not part of the good old boys club, and I got to figure out right. I need to play better or get inside it." But but going now, back to that where he was watching the Ryder Cup with his family. Um, to me, I gained a, a new respect for him and how much of a team player he was. To me, he proved why he should have been on that team in that scene because he, wa- he wanted You're to be part of the team. You're not playing for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. 
He wasn't mad that he wasn't on the team. He was still pulling for Team USA. He was legitimately pulling for the person who took his spot. Yeah, JT. Right? And, and that would be, as a golfer myself, that would be extremely difficult to do. Oh, what did I tell you earlier? I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have watched the Ryder Cup He's probably a little bit of a better guy than me. Exactly. I saw in that situation. I feel like. Because I would have said, this dude didn't even make the FedEx Cup playoffs. How are you picking him over me? He proved why he should have been there. For he sure. He proved why he should have been there. I, 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 I was dead when they showed, like, Keegan's opening scene, and he asked his son, who's your favorite football team? He's like, New England Patriots. And then there was a pause. And the Buffalo Bills. He's like, no, no, no. You, any other team but Buffalo. <laughs> You're a diehard New England guy, and your son uh, says he likes the Bills. Um, bless that his is, heart. That is tough. But I think the flip side to that is the the approach that Luke Donald had mm-hmm. and, like, what he had to navigate. And I thought that was the coolest storyline out of the entire series is how he went about his captaincy. Yeah. How classy. I mean, it's super awesome. Yeah. So the – how about the difference of Jack Johnson making his calls where it was like, yeah. buddy, buddy, what's up, bro? You're yeah. good. You're in. Then you flip the switch to Team Europe when Luke Donald was making the calls, and the players are like, it's just such an honor. It's such a pleasure. Like, And he made sure to FaceTime them, not just call them over the phone, too, right. which was pretty cool. Like, he did it face-to-face with the players. I mean, Justin were. Rose's scene was pretty cool. How yeah, nervous was. was he? He was, yeah. he was on pins and noodles, wasn't he? Yeah. But. I mean, that's – but we all know the Ryder Cup ended up being awesome. It's I always going to. I wish you knew more about the Joe Lacoste It's always going to. I know. And Rory. I know. But, I mean, I think – I'm hoping this year they go back to more of the Tony Finau storyline of players behind the scenes. I, because, I think that's because, a better perspective. Because just following tournaments that we already know the outcome and the stuff to – doesn't change anything. Like it doesn't. You're not providing a new angle of anything. I say now, if you're not an avid golf fan and you watch those events, if you if you didn't see the Ryder Cup and yeah, you learned Tom, something. Tom new Kim's there. episode was fantastic. Uh-huh. Him playing the Open with a torn ligament in his ankle, mm-hmm. finishing three, second. Three pair. Yeah. yeah, finishing second. So it's like there's there's good there. Just do more of that. Yeah. So there's a lot of takeaways I think from the season and and definitely worth a watch. Yeah. You mean there's a lot more good stories than just four people on tour? <laughs> I, I would say at least 144 yep. 200 <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're hard on the PGA Tour and stuff but like this week is the best week to watch PGA Tours because it has the most and the best players there currently in the game yeah besides the live guys <laughs> right as right. I say but that's, that's what's always made before the two years ago that was what always made this tournament fantastic yeah so I say now with the sports betting uh, at the next live golf event, do you put a couple bucks on the crushers? Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their odds are going to be so bad. I don't know, right? I mean, they're trying you have to, to put more than a couple dollars to get a return. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, good gracious, back to back Sunday comebacks to win the team event. But um, Paul Casey holing out on the last hole in front of Bryson. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll have to say, I, uh, and this is a total tangent here. Um, you know, when we first started finding out about the live format and that that changing, I, I didn't really like that team thing. I thought it was going to be a flop. But that has honestly made live golf, in my opinion, more fun to watch right now than the PGA Tour. You have to say the team aspect of that, their, their events is kind of pushing like Bryson forward, push Paul Casey forward. Like you could tell they're wanting to win that team event. They're trying on Sunday, even if they're out of contention, to do what they can for their team to make that paycheck. I mean, that paycheck is a lot of money. Yeah. You're splitting $4 million. <laughs> I know. Yes, please. Do you realize yeah. what just happened for maybe the first time on the podcast? Did he make it? That was a positive comment from Caleb. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm full of positive comments. All right. Positive. Yeah. He's he a black cloud, you know, not me. <laughs> he must have had a good drive into work or something. You know? Um, yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay. Show and tell? Yeah. Yeah. Enough golf news. Only positive stuff this week. Players Championship. Sun Jam's going to win. I'm going to win some money. <laughs> <laughs> what we got for show and tell today, Miles? I had a feeling these were going to be on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's pretty. It's my next set of irons. Well, as of yesterday, they're officially on the Well, they're not on the way until April, but pretty excited for these. So we had we to kind of keep these a little bit of a secret. We were on a conference call with Bet and Artie uh, a couple weeks ago when they showed us these. And the only thing that I will say that I was a little bit kind of bummed about is when you hear Bettinardi, you think milling and 
you know, obviously, like, Tiger has the milled sole on his irons. It's mm-hmm. like, I feel like they could have milled the sole. Yeah. That would have been cool. Milled something? But overall, the what's really cool about this iron is the price point. Is when you typically see, like, one of these small batch companies that are doing it the right way, not right. making it in the same factory as the other 10 DTC companies. Um, you're expecting 350 to 600, like National Customs, uh, Mira. Um, these heads, I believe, are going to retail uh, at 220 in steel and 235 in graphite with a stock shaft. Uh, and same thing for head only pricing. So um, we are going to be one of the only accounts starting out on the East Coast that will have access to these two. Yeah. Um, so Fred Couples already got a set built, put it in play. He's been using them, yeah. So pretty, pretty cool to kind of see a guy like that, like a ball striking. Guy put them in. So they're going to have a, this is a CB and they'll have an MB version. Yeah. Yeah. So they got two models, right? I really <laughs> like the way that the CB looks here. Um, it reminds me of the 750s, your old 770s. Yeah. Kind of. I say 760 as well. Like or se- sorry, not 750, yeah. 760. Yeah. So it's, uh, and I'm glad to see more of that muscle back style CB mm-hmm. coming. Yeah, more traditional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's birdie for me. I'm I'm birdie. I'm hoping Huge it birdie. feels as good as it looks. Yeah, yeah, I know. Me too. That's just the cool thing. But we'll we'll definitely do some <laughs> yeah. testing. Here. I do pretty... like that they were able to do the you know the trademark or the, the signature Betnardi beehive milling in the cavity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a good cool. look. Yeah. Now I just hope they kind of clean up their wedge shape to go with it. Yeah. Because you know how they're like, their wedges, they have definitely a different look to it. Not so traditional shaping. They're very short and tall, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But obviously probably wedges, new wedges coming down the pipeline then. More than likely. Paint fill, it's BB and FCO ferrules, and it'll be really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we giving it? Birdie. Birdie? Birdie. Yeah. I think that's a consensus. I'd say Birdie Anything new is going to be Birdie. Yeah. 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 I say, I, obviously I'd want to see it in hand, hit some Until shots with it, see what it does. <laughs> And um, but it's a pretty uh pretty cool golf club. We'll give yeah. it a birdie. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the negative comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't Caleb, said anything. I haven't said anything, Daryl. No, no, you first. <laughs> I'm gonna always side on innovation and outside the box. Nice. Okay. And I like is. how you're tiptoeing around it, you know. <laughs> you don't have I mean, to. It's, it's a different golf ball. Uh, it's something different. So what is? It, what we are we looking see, at? What's this called? It's like a paintbrush splash. I say it's like <laughs> splash or something. I think they're calling it. Yeah. Ink. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the Vice concept where they had the paint splash, but the drips. The drips. Yeah. That's where my when you said innovation, it's like. Yeah, they walked into Target and bought a dozen of vices. <laughs> <laughs> How do we change it? It's different. Uh, I think it's going to, it definitely probably screams to the younger crowd. But is this the speed saw? Yeah, it's on their budget ball. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think it's going to be something that we're going to see. On a TP5. But. Yeah, on a TP5 or, or become a prevalent ball. I'm going to side with you, Daryl. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's different than just the, uh, I mean, I played the American flag Truvises for, I mean, I had six dozen of those until I lost them all. Um, I, I, <laughs> plain white golf balls bore me. Yeah. yeah. Golf, golf can get boring. So I think this is pretty cool. I would definitely get the Panthers colors because every time Panthers lose this season, I'll go play with that golf ball and lose it too. So, wow. Um, That's, wow. Our Panthers are going to suck. Yeah. Yeah, no. Tepper, thanks for getting rid of Brian Burns. I hope you're listening. <laughs> That's, That's a good. bar. I mean, it's cool, but <laughs> it's there's so many, so much of this going on. And I think Cali kind of owns the market when it comes to like the True Viz and yeah. the Taylor Made and the TP series already has the picks. So I feel like this is getting a little bit redundant down in their market. Because yeah. I'd rather Taylor Made focus on the picks and make. Cooler designs well, with that, like they have been. Well, they're, and they're they, doing that. I was like, guys, they're going to be limited release too. They're not going to be a full run of golf balls for an entire year. Okay, so all so, these are so like like one like I mean, you imagine it's kind of like anything that what these golf balls do want is once they sell out of them, they, on to the I'll next say, thing. I'd have to agree with you, Kyle. I give it a par. Like to me, there's just so many different patterned golf balls now that it's starting to become a little bit redundant. It doesn't stand out from the crowd. I, I can go with that. I yeah, go with the bar. I, mean, for sure. I think that this is a you, ball for... You were saying it was going to be innovative. 
12. Well, no, he's saying it is because it's different. No it's one's, different. Okay. We've it's seen the different, drip, different but no pattern. one's done right, the, right. the ink. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean if you Imagine draw. them sitting there in the pitch meeting. It's like, you know what we could do? Let's ink. Same, same, but different. <laughs> <laughs> James right. Franco, same, same. Uh, so we'll give it a par. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which I just noticed this. Look on the number two on the right side. The paint's actually messed up, like the urethane or the. Oh, Kyle. The cover's actually messed up on that one. Is it messed up right there on the two right there? Yeah. It might just be a glare from <laughs> the camera. That's semantics. It's. Just, it's, it's mm, well, you uh, see the you videos sure of the cut open new TP5s. You sure about that? Sure about that? All right. Loggerhead Golf. If you can make a hole in one on any hole, but only one, which hole would you choose? What if I have like three? Yeah, I say. Like, are you I trying at least two? Are you trying to like pre? Oh, on any hole? any par three? I Preset play. our intentions. Well, no, showing an hole. image I've of pick that right. seventeen. Any hole? Yeah. Well, it says any hole. Okay. All right. It's so gotta this, be. A, it's gotta be a par first. three. Let's so, preface that. It's gotta be a par three. Pending that I actually get to play this sometime in my lifetime, number twelve, Golden Bell. You stole my hole. Uh, sorry, I got there first. <laughs> 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 my reason for it's probably gonna be different than yours. Uh. Um, I just, I have an utmost respect of the backdrop of that hole, the azaleas, the dogwoods, just the beauty of that golf hole. And it is a hard hole. It's 155 yards, but it is one of the hardest. It's when they So much history has happened. There. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we seen a player go in that bunker, that back bunker? How many times have we seen yeah, a player go in the water? Or yeah, jump in the water. Say, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, it's a hard shot. It Ear is my, a hard shot. Jordan Speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that would be my hole. Yeah. It's a hard hole That's to be. a good one. Yeah. I don't know. For me, just because it's personal, I think, uh, what is it, River 5? River number 5? Yeah. No, yeah. River number 6. Is it 6 or is it 5? It's 6. 4, 5, 6. It's before, yes. the, it's yeah. before yeah, the River five. number 6. Yeah, on the so river. Just because, like, I want to approach it from a realistic aspect. Like, everybody and their brother is going to say 17 sawgrass or something at Augusta, which played, is fine. Played, I've played that hole in a normal round of golf. It's a 130-yard par three. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of island par threes. Um, I had 130 yards around here. So, I think River 7 for me just because of it's six. six. Or six, <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> Seven's a par five yeah. now, Kyle. Yeah. 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 But, the hardest par five. Oh, yeah. I like I where you're going with it. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that'd be cool just because, like, you know, they host a U.S. Open qualifier there. It's, yeah. it's always in great shape, but it seems like an easy, easy par three. I'm gonna, it's always a funneling off the river. I mean, it's a hard— I mean, It's, it's a hard little golf shot for sure. I'm, my only knock with why I wouldn't choose that hole is because of how the green's elevated. You can't see if it goes You can't in. see it from the tee shot if it went You can only not. see the back right flag. Especially if yeah. put over that bunker. Yeah. It's I very say deceptive. in the U.S. Open qualifier, they put it in the back right. Yeah. yeah. Which, like— Last year, I hit a seven iron there, and it was dead on it. And it looked like it stopped in front of the hole. We get up on the green, I was twenty five feet short. Yeah, it's just a. It's a I tough say if, I, if I was picking a hole at River Landing, I'd probably say number ten on the river. Yeah, because of the setting of the hole and, and where yeah. the green is positioned, like you'll you'll be able to see right away if your ball went in or not. And then you're right there at the clubhouse. You know, it's just a it's a cool setting. That's the one I would pick personally. But you're right. I think I think River Six is. It's probably the harder shot. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd also be cool. We're going on a little golf trip in April to the tree farm, and so far, nobody's made a hole-in-one there. Yeah. So if one of us could be the first one to <laughs> do it. Actually, so, uh, I think yeah. they have a hole-in-one on number one because they have a plaque on the opening day. Well, any hole but that one. None of us have made a hole-in-one yeah, exactly. there. So. Exactly. Well, I've exactly. never made a hole-in-one, period. I was going to actually uh, I was gonna say we could t share some hole-in-one stories, but they would be a little bit one-sided. <laughs> wow. <Kyle. laughs> <So. laughs> Have you made one? Yes. You made, you haven't made one. Yeah. yeah. I made yeah. mine in which I don't know if you guys saw, like they did that whole like top courses. Like my favorite course, obviously it's just personal to me, is Naples National. Yeah. Number six, it's 150 yards at max, um, sand scrub, island green. Like it's the hardest little devilish par four with insane undulation. I hit a gap wedge from 133. It was front left pin, ball hits right, spins, goes in the hole for my first hole in one. Heck yeah. Funny enough, I didn't even want to play golf that day. I was hitting balls on the range, and one of the caddies came up. He's like, come on, come play. And I, he was like, you've been out here for too long. Let's play. And I was like, nah, I'm going to probably just go home and chill. Mm -hmm. I kind of got dragged into playing. So went back to number one, teed off, played, get there. 
I make a hole in one. I follow it up with the birdie on the next hole. And I realized after that, I forgot to change golf balls. So <laughs> now the next part, the next part four, it's almost impossible to lose a ball on that hole. Um, so that, that's the good news. Yeah. But, um, uh, I was just in such like a, yeah, shock. Yeah. Shock <laughs> that I didn't even realize it until like I was holding the ball. I was like, wait, this is my hole in one ball. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You say that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Which, speaking of which, I don't even know where that ball is. I was going to say, I've saved mine, and I have no clue where they are. I've moved now so many times since then. Yeah. That have you? It's four. Dang. Yeah. Good. My course, since I haven't said my course, you haven't said yours either. Mine would probably just be kind of like Kyle. It's probably just a little more sentimental value. I want to make a hole-in-one on Heron number 5 at Carolina National. That would be a good yeah. setting for and one. And I've played, yeah, I've played there so much. I mean, obviously, that's where I've learned to play golf. So it's just one of those things that – it's a uh, it's one of my favorite holes. Yeah, in golf in general, you can get a pin position that's easy out there. But if you're not on the right, like the tee box could be anywhere. It's a horseshoe par mm-hmm. three. So yeah, such a good hole. Um, but I would I'd take a hole in one anywhere. I was, I'll take yeah. it anywhere I can get it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but if I could pick only one, it's going to be twelve at Augusta. Yeah. Um, like I say, I picked twelve at Augusta because I think the quality of the shot it would take to to make it. It's like you say, even though it's a hundred and fifty five yard shot, it's a difficult hole to make. Um, the setting there. And then the main reason why I would want to make a hole in one on number twelve at Augusta is because that means that I am playing at Augusta that's, National. That's yeah. That's fair. That's what I'm you saying. know what I mean? That is fair. So that would be that's the main reason. And then yeah. I can say I've had a hole in one on Amen Corner. You know, yeah. like that's just yeah. kind of checking that's, all the boxes, that's right? That's all the boxes. Um, I mean, how play. original of you guys. Okay. I know. Yeah. I'll say now, like to I be honest, if I a more realistic one. I haven't had a, a hole in one at my home golf course, Deerbrook in Shelby. No way. Yeah, I've made <laughs> I made three at Lonnie Pool and I made one at the Die Course at Landfall. Um, so if a more realistic one, I'd want to I'd want to make a hole in one on uh, I'd probably say number fourteen at, at Deerbrook. I've snuck it by die number two so many times. Five. It's five. It's a par three that has the power line. Six. Six. Yeah. Yeah, so I literally flew it in the cup and it went in, bounced out. I've done everything but yeah. make a hole in one. Like I've hit it, flown it in a hole, and it come out and everything else. Ugh. Six and, is a great part three. Fits my really well. Six at Deerbrook? You don't even no, know. No, sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were talking about with landfall. No, huh? Not uh-uh. six. Uh, what's uh, what's the uh, par three at? Uh, on ocean? the die, water on the, on the right, long uh, one. Oh, uh, 16. Or six, yeah, 16. 16, sorry. Yeah. That one. I said, I've come close there. Um, but I haven't made one. But yeah, I would say for me, uh, number fourteen at Deerbrook would be the realistic one. So uh, from the back tees, a two hundred yard par three, very undulated green. Um, I'll carry over water. Like it's a, it's a good, it's a good shot to make one there. It is. So take it anywhere. Same. All right. Sounds like uh, number twelve at Augusta's got the <laughs> the eyes. It's have a popular it. one. Yeah. yeah, it's a popular one. I say, let us know down in the comments what hole. Yeah, that'd be, you would that'd be interesting. Yeah, and if you have made a hole in one on number twelve at Augusta, tell us the story. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to hear the story. Call yeah. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. If you guys haven't already, we got a pretty awesome Mira build in the video that we uh, debuted last week. Um, so check that out. Turn on those push bell notifications, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cool.